the dramatic spread of the novel coronavirus, now called COVID-19, has sparked immense alarm across the globe. As countries like ours grapple to deal with an increase in confirmed cases, it's only natural that fear and panic continue to rise, driven by uncertainty. The first step in preventing this panic is to empower ourselves with factual information about the infection, how it spreads, and what we can do to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our community from this infection. The most common symptoms are fever, dry cough, tiredness, body ache, running nose, sore throat. Some people may actually have very mild or no symptoms at all despite being infected with the disease. The most important warning symptom of a severe illness is breathlessness or difficulty breathing. Other symptoms may include high-grade persistent fever, a cough that just won't go away, severe tiredness, dehydration, drowsiness, irritability. And these are warning signs that you should get medical attention immediately. Details coming in, data coming in from China actually tells us that over 80% of infected patients have a mild self-limited illness, which means that it will resolve spontaneously without seeking any medical attention. One in six people would go on to develop a severe attention requiring a severe infection requiring medical attention. From what we understand, from data coming in from China again and other outbreak areas, is that it's older people and people with other chronic medical conditions like chronic lung disease, chronic heart disease, diabetics, patients with cancer, smokers, that are at risk for the most severe forms of the infection, including severe pneumonias. As the name suggests, novel coronavirus has infected humans for the first time. So most of us, all of us in fact in the community, have absolutely no immunity to this infection. And data coming in from China and other outbreak associated areas tell us that the virus is extremely efficient in transmitting from person to person, causing a large number of infected people in a relatively short period of time. How is the novel coronavirus transmitted from person to person? The answer is quite simple. Through respiratory droplets, which are expelled when an infected patient coughs, sneezes or exhales. These droplets land on people in close proximity to the infected person and when you breathe them in, the infection is transmitted from one person to another. In addition to this, close contact with an infected person, shaking hands, sharing the same spoon, drinking from the same glass, using the same bedding are all ways of spreading infection. In addition to this, droplets when an infected person sneezes or coughs land on surfaces around the infected person like door handles, stairway railings, surface tabletops. When other people around him touch these frequently touched surfaces, the infection is spread from one to another. When you pick it up on your contaminated hands and touch your face including your nose, mouth and eyes. At present, Although there's a lot of research and development in way, on the way, there is no confirmed antiviral which acts against COVID-19. A lot of other antivirals have been used, but they're not proven to be beneficial. Treatment at this moment remains largely supportive and symptomatic. And by that, I mean antipyretics, anti-decongestions for mild illness and for severe illnesses, oxygen supplementation, fluids, and even mechanical ventilation. Regarding vaccines, again, there's a lot of studies underway, but no specific vaccine that seems to be on the horizon at the moment for COVID-19. Regular, repeated, and effective hand wash 
with regular soap and, my, and clean water is what is recommended as many times a day and especially after touching contact surfaces in public places. If you don't have access to clean water and soap, you may use an alcohol-based hand rub with at least 60% alcohol when you're on the go and you're traveling. The next point is, let's all be advocates of cough etiquette. What is cough etiquette? We have all been taught to cough and sneeze into our hands to prevent this from spreading to other people. Unfortunately, when you cough and sneeze into your hands, you touch surfaces and contaminate them. You pull on door handles and contaminate them. And this is what is touched by people around you and the infection spreads. The best way to go about this is to cough into a disposable tissue or sneeze into a disposable tissue and dispose it after you're done with it wash your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. If you don't have access to a disposable tissue, cough or sneeze into this aspect of your bent elbow. This aspect of your bent elbow is unlikely to touch frequently touch surfaces in the community. Some innovative ways to prevent touching frequently touched surfaces in the community include using an elbow to open public doorways, using a pen to press elevator buttons, etc. So these are all things that have been suggested to prevent spreading of the virus in the community. Social distancing, which means keeping a one meter distance or a three feet distance between people in all public places to prevent transmission of the droplet infection has been advised. However, in our environment, in crowded cities like Mumbai, it's practically impossible to envisage this on a crowded train or other public transport places. And hence the only recommendation can be that if there is any non-essential need to be in a public place or a local gathering, avoid it as far as possible. By and large, the use of masks has not been advocated for healthy people in public places. The reason for this is that it's not possible to wear a mask continuously and if it's worn improperly, it can actually give you a false sense of security and hasn't been proven to be beneficial in many ways. Masks are required and should be worn by people who are sick, who are coughing or sneezing, people who are caregivers for sick people in close proximity with them and healthcare workers caring for the sick. So the current guidance, as we understand it from the government of India, is to avoid all non-essential travel to countries which are um, sort of worst affected by the coronavirus. And I believe these are five. Again, wearing a mask when you are traveling, I would consider it impossible to wear a mask on a long distance flight continuously. You might have to take it off when you're eating or doing other things and then no one really knows the benefit of it. But once again, definitely, if you are sick, if you have symptoms of a cold and cough, avoid travel at all costs. If you have to, please wear a mask. Most parts of India at present have no evidence of community transmission. And so, if you have not traveled in the past two to four weeks, have no contact with a sick traveler, then please see your local physician and take rest at home if your symptoms are mild. If you do have a positive history of relevant travel or contact with a sick traveler, please get yourself tested at a government designated testing center. And finally, facts not fear is the trending motto for the day. So please continue to empower yourself with factual information, guidance and updates from authorized websites like the Government of India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Center of Disease Control and the WHO website.